welcome to Counties Connect and thank you for being here with us. We're looking at resilience this week in our devotions, particularly through this lockdown. And we're asking ourselves, how can we improve our spiritual, physical and mental resilience? So following on from Steve yesterday, where he looked at guarding your heart and spiritual well-being, I'm going to look at how we can guard our body and physical well-being at this difficult time. I've spoken to many people who have said that they are struggling with this lockdown way more than they have the other two. And in our house, we would certainly agree with that. But why? In the first lockdown, we had beautiful weather and lovely light warm evenings. We knew we were doing this lockdown for the greater good and we threw ourselves into it. We took on the responsibility to protect the NHS and whilst we shielded or worked from home, many of us got jobs done around the house and in the garden that had been needed to be done for months. We all commented on how good God was to give us such lovely weather during the lockdown. For the main part, we looked after and cared for each other well. We made the best of that lockdown and our physical well-being was good. But roll forward to lockdown three, which hit us straight after Christmas and is still continuing. The weather is so cold, so much colder than normal. It's windy and rainy most days and we have long, dark, cold evenings. We're tired, we're worn down and nearly a year of seeing so much pain and suffering death with many businesses closed down and many people made redundant. We are a country in mourning with the NHS on its knees. What a difference lockdown three is. Sometimes it feels like we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, or can we? The same God who was so good to us in the first lockdown is the same God who is over this lockdown. He hasn't changed. So let's see how we can get through this one just as positively as the first with resilience from the Lord. This morning, I'm going to look at Psalm 37 verses three, five and seven. And for each of these verses, we will look at three headings. So verse three looks at trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Jesus hasn't changed. Yes, our circumstances have, but if he hasn't. We have to remember he is still God. The COVID virus and the fact that we are still in lockdown nearly a year on hasn't taken him by surprise. He still has the same plans for your life as he always had. If we look at Paul when he was in prison, he writes that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear through the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and more fearlessly. Paul's lockdown was literally in chains, with beatings. No leaving the prison for exercise or Zoom services to attend, yet he was still rejoicing. How? He knew that there was a bigger purpose to him being in prison and that God was working something out through it, not only for the prison guards with Paul's witness to them, but also it was developing other Christians to share their faith more as they saw his attitude to his sufferings and how he was still, in, still glorifying God through it, he could say, yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Holy Spirit of Christ Jesus, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body. God used Paul mightily in prison and to this day we are still learning from these letters which were written at such a difficult time for him. He trusted God and was resilient in his suffering. He pushed through despite the horrendous circumstances and because he trusted in God to look after him both physically and spiritually, he dwelt in pleasant pastures and so can you. We must trust and believe that God is over the whole of this COVID pandemic, as otherwise we have demoted him from being the all-seeing and all-knowing God. And we know that he is the all-seeing and all-knowing God and that he is over your situation, however dire and exhausting it may seem. If we know this, we will be resilient through the ups and downs this lockdown brings and we will trust what the Bible tells us in Isaiah 42 verse 3. 
A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. Once we have really understood that we need to put all our trust in God to see us through this time, we then need to commit to him. Psalm 37 verse 5 tells us to commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. We need to commit ourselves to living for the Lord during this lockdown. Many of us fall into two categories of either existing or overexerting ourselves during this time. Ideally, to get through this current lockdown, we need to be in the middle road of both of these to get the balance right. To just exist is passive and you will find yourself on a roller coaster of emotions. You'll begin to live by how you feel, which will affect how you behave, maybe spending too much time slouched on the TV or comfort eating. As a parent, simply existing will make parenting so much harder at this incredibly difficult time. It will create frustrations between you and your children as you try to homeschool them in a stressed and deflated state. On the other hand, to overexert yourself is just as damaging. It will create stress, preoccupation, tiredness, and you will hear your children, but you won't really listen to them. You'll skim the surface of family life as you try and pour more and more of yourself into your work or ministry. The problem with both just existing and overexerting is that you will respond to things in your current emotional state, which will affect you physically. To be physically resilient is to commit to getting through this time in the best and God, most God-honouring way that we can. Remember, your life is not on hold whilst we're in lockdown. It still has a purpose, and as we commit to God's plan, he will show us that purpose. To help us through lockdown, we need to commit to some time out with the Lord, to have a daily devotion and prayer time with him. This will be tough with children at home from school, and homeschooling adds a huge pressure, as does working from home. If we are trying to do both, there is even more pressure and stress on us and the only way to get through this is with the help and guidance of the Lord. For those of us in ministry, there is so much extra work created in lockdown and so much of it is on screens, which we all know isn't good for us physically either. But we must have our own personal time out with God that works for us and keep to it. God tells us if we commit to him, he will help us through the day. He will help us with our purpose, our family and our work or ministry. When working from home, it's important that we still live our lives with purpose. We get up in the morning, we get dressed and ready for the day. We still have a workplace, but it's in our homes at the moment. It's important that we get ready for our day at work, that we keep to a routine of a working day, that when we stop for lunch, we move away from our workstation. At the end of our working day, we pack up our work, our technology, and we put our home back to our home again. It's important that we eat well at this time, as so many of us eat our emotions, me included. Try to keep to normal meal times, especially if you have young children, as it will help them to keep into a routine. And it's best that you try at your utmost to keep into a good routine for you, as it will help us in your purpose. We know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life and lockdown won't change that, but how you approach lockdown can change your enjoyment of it. In the third verse we are looking at today is Psalm 37 verse 7 and we get the thought of rest. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Many of us have been a lot busier during lockdown. There is so much more need out there in the community. People are scared and want assurance from us that God is still in control. We find ourselves constantly thinking outside the box, being creative in how we reach out to our communities. The way we pastorally care for our congregation has had to change, as well as how we continue teaching and leading. And on top of that, we have to be creative in how we reach the young, different ages in our congregation, from the very young to the elderly. It's a constant juggling act, as the government lockdown restrictions change almost from month to month. This can be physically, emotionally and mentally exhausting, on top of the pressure of family life, especially when we are all locked down together in one home, trying to work, study, do ministry and play. This can just about finish us off. Sometimes we can be a bit overwhelmed with it all, and we get ourselves in such a frazzled mess that rest at the time of that becomes a luxury that we can't afford. But it's not. It is so important that we take time out and rest. If we don't, we'll end up with a lot more than sleepless nights and brain frogs. We'll end up with burnout. 
We are not machines that can keep going. We wouldn't expect a car to run without any fuel. Most of us look after our cars a lot better than we do ourselves. And yet how much more important are we? Jesus tells us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His plan is not for us to be overworked and frazzled. He wants us to stop and carve out time with him where we can rest in him and allow him to minister to us. This is not a luxury but a necessity. If we want purpose in lockdown and God's plan worked out in our lives, we must work look after ourselves physically. We must spend time resting in him and allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us and fill us up and look after us spiritually and physically and mentally. And that will give us the resilience we need through difficult times. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, please help us to be resilient in your strength to get through these difficult times. Thank you, Lord. Amen.